My name's Jeff Bajoric, and my career in sales has been a hell of a ride. And I want to bring you along with me. If you prefer to sell things at a premium, if you never want to win a deal on price, rethink the way you sell. Welcome back to the show. My name's Jeff Bajoric. I'm your host, and I'm here to help you rethink the way you sell. In the last episode, I introduced this concept of talking about the problems you solve instead of talking about the products you sell. And look, you're forgiven. I'm not going to beat you up too badly about talking about your product, except to tell you again that that is not the right way to start conversations. It's not the right way to advance sales processes. It is not the right way to get repeat invitations and repeat business. You need to be a problem solver, not a product pusher. Today on the show, I'm talking to Mark Hunter about this specific issue. And look, I'm not going to beat you up too much, except I'm going to remind you that you can do better, that this is a way to do better. And Mark and I are going to discuss exactly that. So listen to this conversation and I'll see you on the other side once it's done. And we are ready in Studio 1B, the dulcet tones of Mark Hunter coming right to you from the college radio station in Seattle, Washington, some, so many years ago. Okay, Mark. You got a good uh, memory. Was that good? Was that good? You got a good we've, memory, yeah. We talked a couple of times before yeah. about that. Um, I, I think a lot of your personality on the stage was probably honed during those early days doing college radio. Is that a fair assumption? Yes, on the top floor of Alexander Hall at the base of Queen Anne Hill. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's too fun. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Mark, um, we've had this conversation a couple of times. And you see it. I see it. A lot of a lot of people who do what we do see it. And, and even a lot of sellers who are in the field, they see their colleagues doing this. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of momentum towards stopping it, though. And what I'm talking about is selling a product instead of what you should be doing is selling a problem. There are so many salespeople who just get so fired up about what they do. And, you know, sales is a transfer of enthusiasm. So you need to be fired up about what you do, how you help in order to go out there, but you're getting it backward. If you're leading with the product, uh, where, how, where do we start with this Mark? I mean, where did this come from? Like, where did this behavior start? And maybe if we can understand the genesis of it, we can understand how to sniff it out, snuff it out rather, and, you know, uh, do something more productive, which is demonstrating yourself as a problem solver, right? Two completely different things. It starts with when the salesperson's first hired. Oh, let's give you some product training. You know, think about that. I mean, what do they do? They give you all this immersion on what the product is and all yada, 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 yada. And who cares about the product? It's about the it's about the outcome. What do you get as re, if if I want to sell a product? And, and let's not get ourselves because people are at hey, what is it that you do for a living? What is it that you do? You typically say the product that you sell, mm -hmm. right? I mean that, that's typically what salespeople say. So we're we're in this whole product mentality. And again, customers are not interested in products. They want solutions. They want they want answers to their questions. They, they really want answers to questions that they didn't even know they had. Mm -hmm. And that's what the role of the salesperson is all about. So my whole deal is this. I, I, I don't know what to sell you until I know why we're even having this conversation. And so I got I to gotta take a step back and I have to really ask myself, do I understand the need that you have as a customer? Because if I don't first understand your need, and what I mean the need is, is it, is it a need and is it urgent? Because this is two separate things. I've got a lot of needs, but I'm only taking care of the urgent ones. See, so it's, it's kind of a two-pronged piece in terms of really helping solve the outcome, the need and the urgency. Only when I get both of those correct, especially in today's economy, do I have the potential to have a sale. Look, you know how to prospect. I know you know how to prospect, but something still gets in your way. 
As a matter of fact, I've identified eight reasons that you and your team are not creating more sales opportunities. I put them together as a white paper to serve as a companion of this season of the Rethink the Way You Sell podcast. Go to jeffbajorek.com forward slash eight reasons to download your copy and the self-assessment that is included in that white paper so you know where you can make maximal impact right away to improve your prospecting results. Now back to the show. I'm, I'm going to throw a bone to the sellers out there. It gets, it gets confusing because you have this ideal client profile. You have the people that you know you can help because you assume that most of those people have problems like this, right? Like you, you have to narrow down and make some assumptions. Otherwise, you'll be, you know, you, you won't be able to make an impact, right? We need to head in a certain direction with certain marching orders. How do you shift gears from, hey, Mark, I'm, I'm calling from Acme Incorporated and, you know, we understand, you, know, you understand that we sell rockets and I understand you to be a company full of wily coyotes and you need rockets. You I need assume. To, to your back. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> you know, I mean, at, at, at you, you're calling people, you sell rockets, you're calling on a, a company of coyotes. You know, they use rockets. You assume they have problems with the rockets that they're using. Um, when do you shift gears from talking about your rockets to thinking in terms of catching roadrunners? Well, see, that's the whole thing. What, what's, what's the coyote doing? Trying to catch the roadrunner. Okay. Right. That's what, that's what the coyote is trying to do. The rocket is only the means to get there. And, and this is what we have to understand. We have to first understand what is the need that the customer has. Mm -hmm. And we see this coming up time and time again. I was on the phone this morning with a person and he was going through, Mark, here, here's what I sell. And I said, stop. What you sell is not a product because what he was doing was describing to me all of the wonderful features of his product. Who cares? I said, what, what's the solution that it solves? Mm -hmm. And if, if, if it can't solve a solution that the customer can identify with, there's no sale. Ooh, I love what you said there because it's not only about the solution. It's about a solution the customer can identify with. Right? See, that's, that's, that's key. Now, mm -hmm. let's use this example. We'll say that I'm a broke, broke used car salesperson. Mm -hmm. And I'm used to selling used cars. And suddenly I get a job at the Mercedes dealer. Okay. Suddenly I find myself on the Mercedes. How good a job do you think I am going to do in terms of selling Mercedes when I'm used to selling used cars? You know, and, and, you know, and buy presumably here. not used Mercedes, right? Yeah, like, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah, 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 right. You, you know, buy here, pay here. Okay. Yeah. You know, you know, and, and because they can't relate to the outcome, they can't relate to the outcome. Oh, we sold cars. We sold, I, no. It's the experience that you get from owning a Mercedes. It's the experience right. you get from driving. It's the whole experience. And until that salesperson can understand that, they are not going to be successful in being able to sell a Mercedes. Yeah. You see, you got to understand the outcome. Yeah. Because when you, you sell, you know, buy here, pay here, uh, buy here, pay here, you know, uh, used cars, you're trying to help people get from A to B. When you're selling an $80,000 AMG, SL, whatever, I see them drive by every once in a while, the beautiful automobiles. Um, that person doesn't need a ride to work. That person is looking for an experience. That person is looking for prestige. That person is looking for status, luxury, uh, head turning, you know, uh, people on the, on the street. And it's a completely different set of motives. And I think that's what this comes down to. So many salespeople sell their product without regard to buying motives and context around why the features and benefits are, they're real, right? The features and benefits are very real and they lead to an outcome. But how am I, the consumer, your prospect, supposed to have just, you know, by default, the proper context to understand how that's going to help me? The solution needs to relate to the buyer. Or, or be relatable rather to the buyer rather than just being something they can imagine. That's without a doubt. That's why two people will pay different prices for the same airline ticket, <laughs> right? Yep. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I have a trip here. 
this next week and I have a very tight window. And now if this goes off on time, I'll be amazed, but, right. but I end one event and I have to be at another event. There is only one flight I can be on one flight. And you know what? I, I, I'm not going to tell the airline this, but I would pay whatever it takes right. to be on that flight. Cause it's the only flight I can be on. Yeah. 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 Versus someone else who's willing to be bumped. Sure. Because someone's going to, you know, offer them, you know, we're, we're looking for volunteers, right? Because, because there's some idiot who's just coming from one speaking engagement has to get to another speaking engagement and will pay through the nose to, <laughs> to make that flight. Right. So bump somebody else, would you? Right. Right. And right. if anybody listening right now has any time available on their private jet that they'd like to donate to yes. Mark. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and, and it equates flights between Dallas and Nashville. So, right. so, if, so if you want to offer that up right now, just go ahead and, uh, Call me. We'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's bring this back here. Let, let's let's focus now on the context around how salespeople listening to this can be better and how leaders yeah. who are listening to this can help encourage their teams. Because I think leaders have a role in this, right? It, it starts with the training. It starts with the onboarding. It starts with, let's get you so fired up about this product, but then not having the leadership come through and say, okay, now that we know about the product, let's start to think in terms of how we solve this. How does how does a seller become a problem solver, become known as a problem solver instead of a product peddler? What are well, the first it, couple of steps they need to take? It, it, it's the questions you ask. It's not showing up with a product. I always say the best presentation ever made is the presentation never given because mm -hmm. I'm showing up and I'm just asking you questions. And, and all I need is a couple of questions because whatever you share with me, I'm going to ask you another question. I'm going to ask you another question and, and, and boom. And the whole idea is I want you to be able to explain to me what is the issue. It may be a pain. It might be a gain. It might be a security piece you're looking for. It might be an advantage you're looking for, whatever it might be. But I got you, I have to get you to be able to share that with me. And then it's my job to be able to magnify that. How do I magnify that so you understand the real consequences, the real potential in it? Mm -hmm. And then I have to begin saying, how do I make sure that this has a level of urgency? Because again, it can be a need you have, but if it's not urgent, you're not going to do anything with it. That is all before I even begin talking mm -hmm. about a product. Can I go as far as to suggest that you start asking these questions and planting these seeds before you've even earned the meeting? Yes, sure you can. This is this is what's great because think about this. Do do people wake up in the morning and say, "Man, I hope three salespeople sh uh, <laughs> show up today at my front right. door and and pitch me on something?" No, they don't. They don't. I I want to in my prospecting phase. I lead with questions that are engaging. I lead with questions that are. I want to get them thinking. I, I want to challenge them mm -hmm. as to their current position. Because mm -hmm. again, the job of the salesperson is this. The job of the salesperson is not to fulfill orders. That's customer service. Right. The job of the salesperson is to create incremental sales. How do we do that? By helping others see and achieve what they didn't think was possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not rocket science. Oh, are we going back to Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner now? We are going back to Wiley. <laughs> I, I remember those cartoons. Those are those are great, great cartoons. Somehow, somehow the Roadrunner won. Now always. think about this. Why did the and and, and the Roadrunner always taunted the coyote, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And and think about why, because the, the outcome that the Roadrunner had was to basically taunt the coyote. That was that was that was the whole outcome. Because also yeah. the more they taunted, the more you'd come back and Watch tomorrow's cartoon, right? right? I and I would argue that if the Acme Rocket salesman or saleswoman were better at helping Wiley e. Coyote create a better outcome, then the Roadrunner probably would have gotten caught, and that would have been the end of the series. Now, of course, there wouldn't have been more cartoons the next time, but um, I I don't want to digress too much because I love Looney Tunes. But getting back to this idea of challenging the thought process challenging the status quo, um, making someone recognize that they're capable of something they didn't think was possible. This starts, th this is th that group of emotions is called tension. That's, that's what I refer to as tension. And you have to create that tension as early in the process as possible. And later this season, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, actually quite a bit more about this, but you know, this, this concept that you have to get emotionally engaged quickly 
in order to keep that emotional level high throughout the process. The questions that I ask in discovery, I will often ask in prospecting first before I've even won that meeting, because I already want, I want to change the way they're thinking. I want to change their eye level as it relates to how they look at this, this problem. And I want to change their eye level as to how they look at the problem, not as to how they look at my solution. That's a Why fundamental not? difference. Yeah. It's yeah. a fundamental difference because now you're getting them thinking about a way that is contextual to their own issues. They may consider your solution, but more importantly, right now, before they even know what your solution is, they're considering you as a solution provider. And if you ask the right questions the right way, they will start to see you as a resource. As, That's yeah, someone yeah. worth talking to with something worth talking about, right? Go ahead. Yeah. It, it, the example I love to use is you and I get to work with a lot of different companies over the course of any year, mm -hmm. or I'll, I'll take the stage, I'll be speaking at a sales kickoff meeting or something like this. And people always say, well, what, what do you know about our business? What do you know about our business? And, and how long have you been in the industry and all that sort of stuff? And okay, that, that's kind of mild chit chat. Sure. So what it comes down to is what are the outcomes that your customers have? That's what I have my experience in. My experience is in the outcomes. Mm -hmm. It's not in your product, not in your widget. Right. It's how do I help you create the out? See, the, we will be seen as a person who is irreplaceable. When customers see us as, wow, you help me find solutions to things I didn't think I mm -hmm. could find solutions to. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if and it's it a does, product, you can buy it. You can buy it off Amazon. I think, I think that's a pretty good website. Right. <laughs> they've, they've certainly done well. And it's, it's funny, the more I go to those different engagements, the more I work with those different teams. So what do you know, what do you do with our industry? Like, actually, this is the first time I've worked in this industry. Oh, why, why did they pick you? Right. This, they're not so audacious as to, to ask that, but they're more polite than that typically. But the answer always comes down to, well, you just like just about every other organization that's out there that I've ever worked with struggles with creating new opportunities because you don't create tension early because you're starting yes. to talk about yourselves and not about the outcomes and you lose the interest of your buyer before you even get it. Yeah. And then they sit back and they're like, Oh, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You're Oh, I can't wait for your presentation. And they just kind of, that's, walk that's, back. It, this is why I, I tell new salespeople, sales managers, you, what you want to focus on first is what are the outcomes mm -hmm. your existing customers receive share with them, share with First thing, don't share with them the product catalog, which you do. Share with them, these are the outcomes. These are the outcomes our customers have been able to achieve. Mm -hmm. And why have they been able to achieve it? And how? And what was the process we went through? That's, that's the first step in beginning to change that whole mindset. I want to be focused on the solution, not on the product. Mark? Once again, making people think, making people think differently, making people see things that they didn't know were possible prior. Thanks for uh, stopping by here. And uh, let's carry this conversation on again at Outbound. We will carry it on. Thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate it. Awesome. Well, what'd you think? How many of you were expecting a Wiley e. Coyote reference? Um, I can tell you I wasn't. That analogy came out of thin air, but I'm glad we went with it. It was kind of fun. Um, but do you understand the point? Or is this point a little more, a little better illustrated at this point? Like you need to create context in your buyer's mind. Context that your ability to solve the problem is going to be relevant to them, regardless of what your solution looks like. Like the solution is the last piece of the puzzle. First of all, you need to get them to understand what their problem really is. Sometimes they're not even aware of it. Then you need to get them to the point where they're okay with solving that problem. Then you need to get them to the point where they're okay solving that problem soon. Then you have to, or maybe not then, but th certainly throughout this process, you need to get them uh, with their minds wrapped around the idea that you're the one that can help them solve this problem. And then finally, your job is to get them to say, okay, so how are we going to do that? That is the journey that you need to take your buyers on. And you skip and circumvent so much of that process when you say, uh, here, I got this thing. I think it can help you. Like, Think about what you're trying to do. So take that different approach. 
And I realize that this is going to be a shift for many of you listening to this. You're going from a situation where you're so excited about how you help people that you skip the part of the process where you make them aware that you help people like them and that you understand what they're struggling with. You can't put the cart before the horse here, regardless of what you've been taught. Think differently. You'll sell differently. You'll sell better. That's what I'm here to help you do. Rethink the way you sell. And this starts with prospecting, right? And you heard me mention this too. You can ask those questions of the that you're planning to ask in discovery. You can ask them when you're prospecting. There's no reason to wait. You want to start creating that tension early. But we'll get into that later on this season. Thanks again for being here. Got another episode coming up in just a couple of days. Season three is kind of winding down here. Are you happy with what you learned? Are you thinking differently as it relates to your prospecting? And are you thinking about what this makes possible? I'm going to encourage you to do that. And if it's not making you think differently, what are you still doing here? Anyway. I'll let that sit. I don't know if I want the answer to that question, but I'm looking forward to sharing more with you next time. As always, if there's something that you think I can do to help you or your team, please do not hesitate to reach out. I'm here for you. This is what I do. People like you and the results that I help people like you get are why I keep doing it. And uh, thanks again for being here. I'll talk to you again real soon. Rethink the Way You Sell is a Pot About It production. It's mixed and edited by Doug Branson with music by Blue Dot Sessions and Doug Branson. This podcast is masterminded by Jeff Bajorek.